Good evening. An entire hamlet southeast of Lloydminster is reeling after a fire destroyed an important part of the community. Kyle Galver spent the day at the scene and has more. A smoldering pile of rubble is all that remains of the Four Seasons Craft and Tea House in Lone Rock. The family-run establishment was the only restaurant in the small Saskatchewan hamlet and has been a staple in the community for over a decade. It, uh, it was the heart of Lone Rock. All we have left now is the post office. The tea house was huge. People met here to have coffee and to meet and, and eat. They came from far away to eat the food. It was all homemade food. Randy and his wife Bernice are in shock after witnessing something they've poured their hearts into for 13 years burned to the ground. She bought it at an auction sale. I thought she was crazy and, <laughs> and uh, it turned into quite a business. It, uh, I don't know, unreal. And it was more than just a business to Bernice. People are going to miss it so much. And I'm going to miss them. I, it, was, it was more by home than my home because I did everything here. Lone Rock is a very tight-knit community. Everyone is shaken by the fire and they've been reaching out to the Parkins to offer support. People came by last night and are so sorry that it's happened and stuff and, and it's going to be continuing. I know that people are going to... Officials are investigating, but so far no cause has been determined. The Parkins aren't sure what they're going to do, but they are hoping to rebuild one day. Kyle Gallagher, Newcap News. The Lloydminster Interval Home has long provided shelter for battered women and children for more than 30 years. And one of the main sources of income for the home is the Interval Store, a non-profit charity selling second-hand items and run by volunteers. That's why it was such a big surprise to many when the store was robbed. Anna Stanislaw has more. It's just a little bit of a letdown to see that that happened. Smashed doors, broken windows and damaged locks. This is what volunteers came face to face with on Easter weekend. When they found out cash and keys were stolen, workers were shocked and mostly disappointed. Everybody works so hard here and everybody puts so much effort into helping the women and children over at the shelter. It, you know, it just kind of felt like that was taken away from the volunteers. The Interval store works as the main fundraiser to support the home's programs and services. The donations are first given to the women and children in need to set up a new home or whatever their needs may be. The items that are left over are sold back to the community at a very reasonable rate <laughs> and, and those funds go to actually fund our things like our second, um, second stage housing which is a longer term shelter and our programming, our community programming as well. We're probably looking at about um, close to $1,500, $2,000 to do all of the work for the doors and the keys and, and the office windows. Rook Strotzik says this is the first time the Interval store was robbed and the repairs were costly. Oh, I would just like to just express how much that or that they've taken away, I guess, from the clients that actually use the shelter. Um, it's just helping other people out. You know, we're trying to give them a new future, a brighter tomorrow, and that little, you know, that was taken away from them. The Interval store says the RCMP are still investigating. The store is always in need of volunteers and donations of any kind. You can visit their website for more information. Anna Stanislaw, Newcap News. It's an ongoing debate that heated up after the unveiling of the new Alberta budget. And now pharmacists are standing up against the cuts, which they say could put many pharmacies out of business. As Colleen Brown explains, a protest is planned tomorrow to show the government what will happen if pharmacy, pharmacies are forced to shut their doors. Tomorrow, some pharmacies across the province will be closing their doors. Not for good. But between 11 and 1, patients won't be able to access medications they've been prescribed. Hopefully give people an idea of what it would be like not to have pharmacy services. We're just closing for two hours. Um, so it's just going to give a glimpse of what it would be like if we were not there to provide the services that we do. 
Tellier says the protest is in response to not only previous cuts to the industry outlined in the budget, but also ones being implemented as of May 1st. He's hoping this action will change the government's approach. I hope it opens up the eyes of the provincial government so they have some negotiations, true negotiations, with the profession of pharmacy. Uh, pharmacy is tired of being dictated to and told what to do. We want to be engaged, we want to be partners in this process. Tomorrow's temporary closure is in support of a bigger protest in Edmonton outside the legislature. Tellier says at the very least, he hopes people begin to understand the true effects the cuts will have. Things that traditionally pharmacies have done for free, there will be charges to it. So you want it, to, someone wants to talk to us, um, there's going to be a bill for our time. We've never had to do that before. We're trying to avoid going there. Earlier this afternoon, Health Minister Fred Horn did announce the government will pay $40 million this year to help pharmacists adjust to the cuts. In Bonneville, Clayton Brown, Newcap News. With one spot up for grabs on City Council, seven hopefuls squared off last night at the Civic Centre. The All Candidates Forum was hosted by the Lloydminster Chamber of Commerce. Kim Smith was there and has the details. Like other booming communities, the City of Lloydminster is struggling to keep up with the demand for housing. On Tuesday night, candidates fielded questions about the border city's transportation and infrastructure issues. But one question that continued to surface was how the candidates would tackle the affordable housing problem. Council members on hand agreed that the city needs to work with local organizations and other levels of government. People saying that the city can't solve all these problems by themselves. I think that's a great point and, and that's what we've said all along. I think it's always going to be an issue in a growing community. And uh, as we heard, a lot of the times the, the market supply and demand is uh, an issue. Although the turnout for the All Candidates Forum was a far cry from the one held in October, the Chamber of Commerce hopes the event was valuable for those in attendance. Myself, I got to learn about the candidates, a lot of things I didn't know about it, and I think, I think it was good for everybody else to, uh, to dig in and get to, get to know them better, absolutely. Above all else, Mayor Jeff Mulligan hopes whoever is elected is willing to work with the existing council. No one person can come in as one of seven and change the fate of the city, but they can come in and be part of a team that can effectively change our future. The seven candidates each encouraged residents to come out to vote April 17th. We'll have to wait until then to find out who will be the newest member to council. Kim Smith, New Camp News.